December 4th, 2015. This is Radio Tokyo. I'm Jonathan. Nick's here. We're all here. We're ready to have a good show today. Uh, I don't know if you saw what posted on Facebook or the last or the the the, 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 uh, excuse, the, the earlier videos this week. I'm sorry, I, I lost the thought for a second. Uh, but this is, of course, Star Wars month for us uh, because the movie is coming out in like 14, like two weeks, two weeks from now. Uh, for some reason, it seems like as if we're always, you know, a month or close to a month or whatever away from the movie. But it's coming out, and like I said, this is Star Wars month, so we're going to discuss some Star Wars stuff again today. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nick, what what do you have going on today other than uh, other than Star Wars? Like, what's going on in, you know, the world of Nick today? Um, let's see. Well, I could bore you with sports and talk about how the San Antonio Spurs are really awesome. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just kind of living. I mean, I'm trying to avoid the news for the most part because really sad to watch the news right now for a variety of reasons um yeah that, that that's about it it's pretty boring right now I, i'm i'm waiting for star wars i'm, gonna guess I'm waiting for star wars to get excited about something i'm gonna guess it's sad for the exact same reason that the other day you know when i did what was it the wednesday episode i think it was that reason? Is, is it that exact same reason? I mean, there, there, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there, there's that, and then... Uh, just what's going on in the Middle East, and, uh... You know, just... just so there, there, there's, there's a lot of things going on that are very sad to read or look at. Is it possibly the fact that there has been 355 mass shootings in the United States this year, and we're not even close to the end of it? That's kind of a problem. I mean, it's... Yeah, that that's too many. Too it many. Is, I, mean, I mean, think about it this way. There's 365 days in a year, and we've had 355. That means... By the end of the year, if we if if we somehow manage to hold this number here, uh, we will be at only a ten day vacation from this. Now, this is of course you know uh, gun violence that's you know just caused by people who are angry or uh, uh, arguments in a marriage or road rage. And now, apparently, the new the, the new trend is Islamic terrorism. Like, whatever cause of it is, there's way the hell too many people being killed. Now, I say that knowing uh, that violent crime in the United States is actually on a decline. It's been going down. And I think what's going on is we're just, you know, now, it's not as if you and I are immune to this. You know, because we've talked about politics and real-world stuff on the show before. But I think it's just an oversaturation of media i mean people are definitely afraid of what's going on and the more the media you know talks about it and says well it's this and this and this and this uh the more people are going to be upset and well uh, I, 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 would, I would completely agree with that because um if we think maybe even 10 15 20 years ago um I believe mass shootings have been on the rise since then, but even still, uh, you would hear about this locally, usually. It usually wasn't a national story. Um, you, you might hear it well, in your state. It has, huh? uh, it, it, it has, at least with my, I'm, I'm sure, well, both of our lifetimes, uh, since Columbine, but that's, you know, like the first one I remember. Like I, I, I remember, I remember that happening. Of course, you know, I, you know, course I remember, you know, Sandy Hook and other things like that, and the one in San Bernardino. Like, I mean, and now, the the only one of those that is not, you know, like the typical, uh, cliche thing here, you know, for a mass shooter is the instances of Islamic terrorism. Now, the reason I'm saying Islamic terrorism is because it's exactly what it is. 
uh, as an atheist, I have made it a point to understand as many religions as possible. And uh, I have no problem admitting, and if, it, and, if it, and if this upsets somebody, I'm sorry, uh, but I have no problem admitting that uh, people in Islam are, are actually required to memorize the Quran. The Quran has got, oh, I forget how many verses it is. It's like 169 verses that tell you to go kill people who don't believe the same way you do. It's a lot, and Muslims are required by Islamic law because it's part of your religion to, to memorize this shit. Like, it, like it's ingrained in little kids growing up. And that's terribly frightening to me. And the idea that what's going on, and like you know, like what we've discussed on the show before, uh, all it takes is uh, someone not feeling welcome, you know, someone not being nice to them, and that's literally what starts, you know, off, like historically, that's what started off, you know, jihad, is uh, fight the believers not uh, that that are near to you. Uh, because they disagree with you, you know, because you can't get along with them, and that's what starts it. It's always offending somebody, and like you know, there's this big cause about, oh, we can't offend Islam, we can't do this, we can't do that. I say offend everybody, and then go from there. I mean, but re but but realistically, um, I know a lot of people are afraid, and honestly, I okay, here's the thing. I don't want this to become the whole topic of our show, uh, you know, because we we, we 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 do have a lot of. Uh, important stuff to talk about today uh, concerning Star Wars. Uh, so just like a few more minutes here, you know, like a few few more comments, and we're gonna move on. Uh, but it's important to me, you know, and I think everyone should not be afraid of what's going on. I I do think uh, that there might be an oversaturation of you know seeing what's going on in the world, uh, you know, because you know, every, everyone's got Twitter, everyone's got Facebook, everyone's got Instagram, uh, YouTube, and like literally you have news in the palm of your hand now on like smartphones or iPads, whatever, like, it's, it's, it's impossible to miss it, and I think what we need to do is just collectively take a step back and review this information and figure out a possible solution somewhere. Now, I'm not going to say right now that I think it's uh, tough for gun laws. I think that might work. I really do, and it seems to be the only thing we have at work, right, you know, that had, that had been done right now, uh, and I do know there was some legislation passed, or it was at least brought up by Paul Ryan, I think it was last week, uh, saying that uh, because the NRA does not want people, but actually, actually the NRA wants everyone to be able to have access to a gun, and that includes people who are on terrorist watch lists and on no fly list. I mean, you know, people who clearly should not be able to own uh, to, uh, to legally purchase a firearm. Uh, for example, yeah. uh, the shooters in San Bernardino. Now, 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 now th th this is a verified fact here. Uh, the wife uh, was able uh, was somehow able to pass background checks. Even though she's not from here, uh, no one knows anything about her except the day they found out that, yes, she had been recruited by ISIS over social motherfucking media, over Facebook, over Twitter, stuff like that. Okay, That was announced today. She was able to, to talk to them over Twitter, and it somehow went missed. Now, I, now I don't know uh, what, the, what the fuck the federal government's doing about this, but Anonymous sure seems to have gotten a hold of the information. And, it's, and, and we'll say, like, it's like, here, here you go, solve this. It's a problem. Now, like I said, really, I also, don't know. Uh, thank I, you, I, Anonymous, I, for, you know, fighting that battle for us. Yeah, so. thank you, Anonymous. But, like, really, I don't know, you know, that tougher gun laws are going to be a solution. Uh, I think in a lot of ways it might help. I think, you know, a more extensive background check might help. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but like I said before, you know, I think there is definitely a culture of violence. Whether it's from religion or whether it's you know, uh, just because it, it's it's always been part of American culture. We is, we have it, always it is, been. It is, and it, it actually. Uh, I, I've always said we are not Athens. We are Sparta. I I think in a lot of ways we are. Now, see the the reason that's more important. Well, there, there, and, and you know what? This is going to be the last thing we're going to talk about for this uh, because that's actually a good point. Uh, a lot of people seem seem to identify with you know the Spartan mentality. You know, like. Uh, uh, particularly, uh, you know, Mon Lava, you know, come and take it, you know, that mentality seems to be pretty, pre you know, pretty uh, present in American society, and it's, 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 it, in a lot of ways, it's frightening to realize exactly how violent we are in this country, like, our history, I mean, for example, uh, you know, people, like, like the Civil War, people talk about the Civil War, you know, and, and how slavery was just so bad, and why they just get rid of it, well, they went to war, Okay, uh, the nation 
split in half, and people killed one another over that idea. And then there are people who were fighting over the fact that they felt that their homes were being invaded by other people. And some people signed up because they wanted to protect their neighbors. I mean, like, all these different ideas got lumped together because one group of assholes in one place wanted to keep human beings enslaved. And that's no, not well, cool. One, one group of assholes said, if you want to free them, come and take them. That was bad, exactly. basically it. Exactly. But actually, you know what? Uh, you, you know how on our shows, but, you know, we, well, we typically find some segue into what we're talking about. This, Believe it or not, believe it or not, uh, this goes into Star Wars perfectly uh, because, I hate to admit it, but the uh, the Galactic Republic had a history of slavery. Uh, the Galactic Republic had a history of violence. And uh, so, so, so did the, the, uh, the Empire. Uh, but... Uh, well, I mean, that makes sense, since the Empire was born as a Galactic Republic. It does, uh, but... Okay, here's the thing. <sighs> Holy shit, okay. Guys, girls, everybody, this is going to be the most amazing show we're ever going to do. Um, I'm probably going to have to get mad at Nick, and Nick's probably going to have to get mad at me for this one. Uh, but we are doing Star Trek versus Star Wars. Now, both Nick and I like both of them. But, uh, Nick, how do you want to do this? Like, do you want to actually just pick one and each of us defends it, or what? I, I, I think that would be the best one, and oh, I'm going God. to call dibs on Star Wars, so... You're what? I'm going to call dibs on Star Wars. Oh, 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 thank you, that actually makes my life so much easier. <laughs> I, I, I kind of figured it actually would. Okay. Because okay. I, I know you're the bigger Star Trek fan, and I'm honestly a bigger Star Wars fan, so it I will works. See, I like both of them, uh, but I do like Star Trek more. Anyway, before we get into that, before before we get into this, before we get into our whole thing about this, I want to talk about uh, a couple friends of mine, uh, Sarah and Cassie. They have a podcast called Sarah and Cassie and Read Adventure. Their most recent episode, episode 30, uh, was actually about the movie, Uh they used a tarot card deck of 19 cards to divine the plot for the movie. Now, I don't know anything about tarot other than, you know, it's interesting. Uh, like, I, I don't know how to read the cards, but on their website, nerdyadventure.com, uh, they had the layout. And, of course, you know, if, if you're watching this right now, you can see it right here. Uh, they laid their deck out in, like, the pattern of uh, the symbol of the Galactic Empire. And they had 19 cards, and Sarah and Cassie were able to read the cards and figure out what the plot. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to play uh, their, uh, you know, their overall uh, plot of the movie that they came up with reading the cards. It's about a minute long, uh, so possible spoilers here. Let's sincerely hope that... <laughs> okay, here... How do I put this? Uh, I want them to be right because I because I listened to their whole show. I enjoyed the show; it was great. You need to go listen to you need to go listen to it yourself. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I don't want them to be right. It, it's weird; like it's it's really weird. Like it would be cool, you know, for them to have been spot on about this. Just like it's cool, for example, the Batman versus Superman trailer. Uh, Nick and I predicted what was going to happen in that, and we were right. And so it's 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 amazing. And awesome to be right, but at the same time, I don't want to be. Anyway, uh, here it is. So, again, spoilers. Has had the um, the Jedi Knight that um, Han Solo is telling his kids about what happens mm -hmm. with him and their whole family and that incredibly epic story. They realize that they have the Force and so they have the choice of becoming Jedi or who knows what. One of them makes a decision that they regret and probably gets involved Kylo Ren somehow. Chewbacca comes in to try to save the day. He dies in the process. But still saves them. Yes, he still saves them. Which leads to some epic battle with Jedis. So maybe Luke has had the, um, the Jedi Knight Temple and he's been 
and teaching people, mm-hmm. which will lead to this badass queen known as Tanoka whooping in, saving the day, and also like leaving it open to who knows what, mm-hmm. to possibilities. Yeah, and there's and the movie is going to be inspiring. It's going to open you up to a whole new type of Star Wars universe. I almost say a new type of Star Wars universe, but it's probably going to leave it open so it's going to just, all these new movies, which you already know Disney is planning on doing. Yeah. So it's probably just going to like, all this new information is going to come out and just going to make us super excited and ready for the rest of the movie. I'm excited. And that's their basic prediction. Uh, essentially, they they feel, uh, using the cards and using the expanding universe, that Chewbacca's going to die, and Chewbacca becomes a catalyst for setting off everything that you see in the movie. And that is something that is backed up by the expanding universe. Uh, in fact, even in Patton Oswalt's version of the ideal Star Wars movie, uh, from his amazing, amazing rant about it that he did, off the top of his head, by the way, off entirely off the top of his head on Parks and Recreation, uh, he even says that Chewbacca has died. So maybe it's what's going to happen. Maybe it's not going to happen. I don't know. Uh, but very good job, Sarah and Cassie, for coming up with that theory. I don't know if there is a more universally beloved character than Chewbacca. That would be really, really, really sad. It it would be, but uh, I do think you know. Okay, it 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 it's 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 it, okay. Here, here's the thing: uh, both of them admitted during their during the show that uh, this. Well, actually, it was Sarah who said it initially uh, that it is not uh, all they're doing. You know, to think about this, you know, like you know, this idea that, for example, Han Solo and Leia have actually had kids. And that's uh, John Boyega, and I still don't know this girl's name. I should know her now. I'm sorry, uh, but they're actually their kids, and they've been in hiding uh, because uh, the First Order may find them. You know, just like it had to be done with Luke and Leia. So maybe that's what's going on. And, maybe. And it also explains why, if you look at you know like some some of the scenes in the trailer, you can see a lot of. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, you can see a lot of similarities uh, between, you know, Luke and Leia. You know, uh, uh, John Boyega's character, you know, uses a lot. He uses a blue lightsaber, you know, and then, uh, you know, she has her hair in braids. Like, like, there is all kinds of similarities put there. So maybe, uh, you know, the... the, the, the I, I really is, don't. I really don't think they're going to go for their brother-sister road here. I mean, it's a possibility, but I, I just don't think they're going to do it here. They could, you know, but again, like, you know, they might not. I don't know. Uh, but the the theory is that Han Solo and Leia have kids. They're in hiding, and they come together because they're because they find them, and they have to tell them what's going on, you know, and like that whole... A uh, point in there, you know, where uh, you hear Han Solo say, um, you know, that the, you know the Empire, the Jedi, it was all true. Maybe that's him telling them what actually happened. But, you know, because we know that in you know at this point in time, you know, of course, you know, we're, we're thirty years away from the end of the Galactic Civil War. Uh, that uh, apparently people are not being told certain things that went on, like they're being. Uh, actively denied the right to know that the Jedi ever existed. And well, that's I mean, it makes sense from the Empire's perspective to deny what happens. It does. and uh, uh, Especially if the Empire was able to retake Coruscant later on, which they, I mean, they might have. And see, th- okay, the big thing here to me is that uh, the Empire, like it's already established, the Empire uh, actually had a, it was a religious policy, anti-Jediism. Uh, they actively denied anyone that was a Jedi, that the Jedi were ever good people, that they were ever, ever, I'm talking in the thousands of years the Jedi were protected the Republic, that they were ever in favor of the Republic and its ideas. They com- it, it, it's essentially, uh, like being anti-Semitic, you know, like being, being against the Jews. Or being against any religion, you know, saying these people are bad, they've always been bad, here's the reason. And that's why it's scary, because that is a real-world parallel. That is a very true-to-life uh, comparison between Star Wars and, and and the real world. Now, 
Okay. And that's actually going to lead into my argument about why Star Wars is better than Star Trek. Okay, well, since you are clearly the one who's not going to win, I'll let you go first. Now, this is going to be a really strange argument to some people, but I would argue that Star Wars is more realistic than Star Trek. Because Star Trek has created a utopian society for the Federation. Um, they have, they, although I, I'm slightly confused about this because in some episodes they talk about currency, but as far as I know, no one in the Federation actually needs currency. Um, so they've moved beyond money, at least in some ways. They, um, all people are unified, they've un unified with aliens, um, they're, uh, they do not have an official standing military, even though their spaceships, scientific ships are uh, essentially military ships at the same time, um, they have a policy of not interfering with uh, uh, planets with resources that they could harvest. Um, it's, a, it's a very idealized universe and a very idealized world where uh, we, we do the right thing almost all the time. And most of the story is about trying to prevent people from breaking those rules or trying to fix when someone does break those rules. Um... Star Wars, on the other hand, and, and, and while those, that's a wonderful story, it, it's a really great story, um, for, I mean, for Star Trek, but it's not realistic. Um, and the way I see it, the way our society is going, um, we're going to be in space a long time before we ever even approach that level of uh, thought process. Or, you know, unification and uh, togetherness. Star Wars, on the other hand, um, you have civil wars, you have backstabbings, you have racism, you have religious ideologies, religious hatreds. Um, in a lot of ways, you can compare the Sith and the Jedi Orders to maybe Christianity and Islam, or um, just uh, Hindus and Islam, or, you know, uh, the Japanese and the Chinese, or there's a lot of comparisons you can make. Um, there's... And the big thing is that um, Star Wars, you have militaries, you have military battles, you have military wars, um, a, every faction knows they need a standing military, they need a way to fight back, and it's a sad part of life, and a sad part of society, but, um, unless we reach the perfect utopian ideals, um, Star Wars is actually more realistic than Star Trek, even with, uh, essentially magic. Well, see, here's the thing. Uh, magic is not real. Uh, it's a belief system, uh, that you can, it's essentially magic, okay, th this is the big secret that magicians don't tell you, and, and I'm probably never gonna be able to ever call myself a magician ever again, even though I, I haven't in a long time. Uh, magic isn't real. It's about trickery. It's yeah. not fooling. It's 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 the it's it's lying to people. So a belief yeah. system to me that is set up on lying to people, saying, "Hey, look at us. We have all these nice beliefs." That does not promote a safe and secure society. That how and but, and, and, but, and, but and, in, and in the Star Wars and, universe, and, magic is not trickery. You can literally push people away from you. You you can change their minds. I mean Yeah, sure the, the you can. Sure you can. The... Now now hang on. I now hang on a minute. 
I like the ideas of the Jedi. I think it's wonderful, important, everything. Even as a Star Trek fan, I like the idea of the Jedi. But fuck the Jedi Order. Fuck them, okay? And here's why. I'm, I'm fixing to ruin. I'm going to ruin the Jedi for all of you. Yoda is arguably the oldest and most powerful Jedi ever in history. I mean, he's been around for pretty much the entire time the Republic has been standing. And in that position, he's led the, he's led the Jedi Order as a member of the Council. Uh, he has trained all the younglings. He's responsible for every single Jedi ever in the Order that's ever been there. He trains them, and he, and he helps them understand, you know, this is what's going on. Like, he teaches them, you know, the basics of lightsaber combat. He teaches them how to read minds. He teaches them how to interpret their thoughts and everything. Yoda is essentially, in that regard, a cult leader. Because the Jedi believe that there is a purity to be found somewhere when you become one with the Force, okay? And there's this whole mystical idea that the Force surrounds you and penetrates you and binds the galaxy together. And then we're finally told in Episode 1, it's midichlorians. There is some shit that is in your bloodstream. It's a disease. It's a bacteria, virus, whatever you want to call it. It's in your bloodstream, and that's what allows you all these mystical abilities. That sounds like religious bullshit, okay? It is a religion that is founded on lying to people. It was a thousand year, a, 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 a thousand years of quote unquote peace, right? Except well, it was, wait, wait, except wait, it wait, wait. How is that except, lying? To, except, wait, wait, wait. How except, is that lying to people? Except, they never, they never de deny the middle chlorine. They could have taught about middle chlorine. I mean, but they didn't. They didn't. We we have a couple lines in the prequels that explains to you how it works. They have to have a midi chlorine count, you, which means that the uh, these religious nut jobs that are supposed to be protecting all of society with their magical powers and their diplomacy and everything, you know, this just shield of invincibility that protects the good everyday individuals of the Galactic Empire. Which, by the way, uh, Coruscant. It's by the way. You know, Coruscant is uh, uh, corrupt. But that, 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 that's not Coruscant. necessarily something you need to teach people. That'd be like you no, having no, a brain no, no. that gives thoughts and that deter the the in the uh, the quality of your brain or your brain cells or however you want to put it. But it's not determines it's not, how smart it is you not. are. It is your midichlorian count. Your midi the higher the midichlorian count, the more powerful of a Jedi you are. Okay. Okay, that is essentially looking at an aspect of a person and saying, look, this is what you have. Uh, who else in history could have possibly done that? Who else in history would have people teach people, you know, like the most ba Oh, damn, Hitler. Hitler did that. Hitler had a, 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 a set of qualities that you had to have. And now keep in mind, this was actually a medical practice. For probably 60 years in the early, you know, early 20th century, okay? The idea that you could look at certain aspects of, in, of, of individuals, whether they're stupid, whether they're tall, whether they're fat, whether they have a mole, whether they have fucked up teeth, whatever, and you could breed them out of society. Eugenics. Now, that does come into play in Star Wars. I'm sorry, Star Trek, but it plays out a lot differently. Okay, what happened in what happens in Star Wars here? Uh, wait, is wait, wait, what wait, happens wait. in Star Wars is the Jedi, the religious nut jobs that supposedly protected all peace, even though they failed more than once. They damn sure failed at the fall of the Republic. Uh, what happens is there is they say, well, we're going to take these perfect members of society and we're going to make them better. We're going to keep order. No, uh, the Galactic Senate could not operate. Without the Jedi, the Galactic Senate, even though it was able to raise an army, could not do it without permission of the Jedi, and they had to have the Jedi in charge of the military. The Galactic Republic could not defend itself; it could not function without the Jedi. That means the Jedi are not only religious nut jobs. That that means they're not only not only essentially Nazis. That means they're not only terrible at defending the Republic because Yoda failed miserably. He had a damn Sith Lord as the leader of the Galactic Cynic and the Republic itself, he failed. The Jedi are religious terrorists. They needed to be wiped out of society. No, 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 no. Now, number one, I find your comparison of the middle chlorine count to what Hitler was doing to be 
completely off, off, just just completely off. In my opinion, uh, analysis of the midichlorian count is more akin to judging a soldier on their physical abilities, or judging an athlete on their physical attributes. Um, we 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 still judge people on their capabilities by their their level of strength, their f quickness, their agility, uh, whatever you want to call it. Middle chlorine count isn't just some made up uh analysis that you can do. Um, it's actual. It, it's something that's actually there. It's something that's actually present. In the the blood of people, you know what actually there was actually present the idea that you had bad teeth, the idea that you were overweight, the idea that you were tall and you were good looking, blonde hair and blue eyes was prevalent for Hitler. What's wrong? Hey, wait, 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 being overweight is actually a problem if you're in the military and you're expected to be a frontline troop or something. There, there, there are actual qualities that we can analyze and say, okay, this isn't going to make you that great at this job. Do you mean that the qualities of every goddamn clone that the that the clone arm that the the, the, the clone armies of the public were made of during the during the Clone Wars? Do you mean how everybody, all of them were based off of a incredibly fallible, incredibly evil and sick and twisted individual? And the clone army was was started by an incredibly fallible, sick, and evil, twisted individual who, by the way, was asked. This is the expanding universe I'm getting into because I'm fixing to destroy Star Wars again for you. Uh, Palpatine was actually asked why it is so many people in the Republic were human. You know what his response was? Well, the majority, you know, our army is human, and I'm human, and the most of our representatives are human. And that's just coincidence. It's all coincidence that they all fit a certain profile. It is all coincidence. Realism. It is all coincidence that human beings just seem to be everywhere. And most of the Jedi Order has been human beings. And they're always these super powered individuals who believe in, these, in, in this mystical idea, this, re, this, this reward that they're going to, you know force everyone to do the right thing. They're going to force everyone, you know, to be correct, and they're going to force everyone to their will. They're going to help protect the hundreds of trillions of people in the entire galaxy without a standing army. Without and now, now you see me. Now you mentioned earlier that you know the people in Star oh, wait, Wars have wait, to have wait, a standing wait, army. Wait, wait, wait. Was it the Jedi's decision not to have a standing order, or was it the have, Galactic we Republic? We have to have a standing army. That's what you said earlier. They have, they have to have these armies to defend themselves. Do you know yeah. who? Do, do you know who doesn't have to have a standing army? Do you know that would be the United Federation of Planets from Star Trek? Every ship, even the scientific ships, even the exploration ships. Every ship that the Federation has is capable of defending itself. Do you know what their number one line of defense is? It is not having an army. It is not having a bunch of religious nut jobs with laser swords running at people and saying, well, we're going to use our Jedi. We're, you know, we're, we're going to coerce you through hypnosis and our religious beliefs to make you do what we say. No, the number one thing Starfleet uses, the number one thing the Federation of Planets uses, and all of their like 150 different independent systems that make them up, the number one thing that they do, diplomacy. They meet with individuals, they learn about their culture, they accept everything that's going on in their society, and they say, hey, look, we'll help you if you help us, it is equal. It is genuine equality. The idea, oh, well, look, it's a utopian future. Yes, it damn sure is. Gene Roddenberry had a very good idea. He had a vision for mankind, okay? The idea is that all wars stop. The idea that we have peace. The idea that no one's ever fighting over religion or money or resources. Everyone pulls everything together because they realize, hey, humanity lives on one planet, okay? It's planet by planet. They're not forcing everyone to join in a, an empire. OK, uh, you don't have to worry about democracy and freedom here because everyone is equal. Everyone has to say everyone can be the absolute best they can be because everyone works together. And it's a beautiful example of and I hate to say this, but it's a beautiful example of what communism is supposed to be. It's ideal. OK, and you can say, well, what's communism? Yeah, yeah, it actually is. OK, I, I admit it is. It, it, it's, it's the idea that, that communities and society comes together and works together 
for the betterment of all. That's what the Federation does. The Galactic Empire doesn't do that. The Republic didn't do that. The Republic failed miserably for thousands of years. Thousands of years. It's even mentioned during the Clone War that the Republic could not hold on to every system. They had people who were just wandering away and either becoming independent or – and that's including some of their strongest allies, okay? The strongest allies that – in fact, the, the Ward of Mandalore was one of the planets that just left the Republic because their government was so constrained having to deal with all this ridiculous bullshit – from the Republic, they left and joined the Confederacy of Independence and Independent Systems for a while, and then they came back. The Republic was literally coming apart at the seams, you know, because it was so corrupt, it was so large, it couldn't handle itself. And Palpatine comes in. What does he do? He starts abolishing systems and making cuts here and saying it's all under me. The Republic fell because one man was given; he was voted their power in. There is nobody. In the United Federation of Planets, or in all of Star Trek, who is capable of doing it? That's the bad guys that do that. That's the bad guys wait, that are ruled. Wait, 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 that is the well, bad guys well, that are ruled well, by the well, religious well, nut Star That is the movie. bad guys that are ruled by their warlike societies. That is the no, bad no, no, guys. Wait, wait, wait. That is what the bad the guys last who Star won't Trek listen to peace. What about, what about that is the, last the bad Star Trek guys movie? who are not diplomatic. That is the bad guys who have the massive armies and the numbers of warships that are capable of dominating everybody else. And you know what happened when the, when the Jim Hadar came for the Federation? You know what happened when the Klingons did? You know what happened when the Romans did? They had their asses handed to them, and, and now everybody works together with the Federation. There was a massive war in Star Trek during Deep Space Nine. A massive war. You're completely with ignoring the Romans, a bunch else. They of came Star together and they saw the problem. You are completely ignoring a bunch of Star Trek storylines, including the latest Star Trek movie where one of the Admirals did try to take control of the Star Trek universe, or the Federation, rather, and trying to militarize them to fight the Klingons. And not only that, the Federation was getting its ass handed to them by the Klingons, the only thing that stopped them from getting beat by the Klingon Empire was because they saved a Klingon outpost. Literally, the only reason that they did not get beat by Klingons is because of that. Yeah, and then what happened a few years later? What happened a few years later? You, dur dur during the War with the Dominion. What happened with the War with the Dominion? Oh, look at that. The Klingons came together. And even though the Klingons didn't agree with the Federation. They did not agree with the Federation at all. They opposed the Federation every way. The Romulans helped. The Klingons helped. It was amazing. And and, th and then you look at what Shinzon was able to do. Shinzon took the Romulans and said, here, we don't like the Federation. Actually, I'm sorry, it was the Raymonds. Excuse me about that. Uh, Shinzon took the Raymonds and said, we're going to make war in the Federation. We're going to kill Jean-Luc Picard, you know, my father that I was cloned from because I'm an evil son of a bitch who was raised in a mine and I'm crazy. Uh, that's what Shinzon did. And look what happened. Look what happened. The Romulans even turned up against him. His own people. His people rebelled against him and overthrew him. Okay? You don't see that happening in the in, in the in, in the Republic. You don't see it happening in the Empire. Yeah. Now, because well, Star well, Trek I, I, is I, an ideal sort of you but Star but Trek is, is an idealized right? universe. In its idealized universe where Every single thing that needs to go right goes right. Um, go, but it, it doesn't. They, 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 no, they blatantly tell you that. For instance, when uh, uh, the, the, in the next generation, when they travel back in time, the help, or was it? It, it was one of them. Uh, when they travel back in time to help make sure that the outpost is at least uh, fought for by the Federation against the Klingon Empire. Number one, clearly, like, when you go back to that, uh, they were getting their asses kicked, and it took literally time travel to save them. Number two, and, and as we all know, time travel is the biggest plot armor and plot hole and plot device in all of storytelling. There is no bigger plot armor than just time travel. 
Uh, I, I would even put that as a bigger plot armor, plot hole, plot device than uh, the Force or magic or whatever you want to say. It, it, it just breaks everything. Which Star Trek repeatedly uses over and over and over again. Number two, you're going to tell me that the Klingon Empire, who is getting ready to go to war and conquer the Federation, just decided to casually, you know, oh, you defended our outposts, I guess we have to make peace with you. Because, yeah, we're not warmongering conquerors that just want to rule the entire universe. That is unreal. That's unrealistic. It's not it unrealistic. Is... It's not realistic, and, and here's why: the Federation has actually been at peace with the Klingon Empire for about 125 years. Okay, by the by, and now I'm talking about the time of next generation. Okay, we're we're talking about 100 or so years here after the attacks on Kittimer. Up until then, it was unending warfare. And now, now here's the thing: there's a reason. There's actually a real world tie-in for this. Uh, the movie that this is shown in. Uh, the Undiscovered Country, uh, came out as peace was coming out between the United States and the Soviet Union. Because, by the way, the Klingons are supposed to be the communists, or supposed to be communist Russia, and, and the Federation is the United States, okay? Diplomacy won. Our tactic of diplomacy won. The Federation's tactic of diplomacy won, Okay. They were able to However, negotiate. They wait, wait. There's a big difference. No, no, there's a big there's a big difference between those two. No, no, it's not. No, the, no, the, the, no, the big no, difference no, no. between is if the USSR and America went to war, the entire world would be destroyed. That's not true in the Star Trek universe. In the uh, actually, Star Trek it's, universe, it's quite the, true. The it's Klingons would true. win. It's quite true that if the Federation and the Klingon Empire went to total war. There would be some shit that would go down. There would yes, be. but the there Klingons would, would, but would here's the win. Thing. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. There was these huge threats of violence. There was all this corruption in the Federation trying to force the war. It didn't happen. Diplomacy worked. The idea of the Federation worked. It worked. Okay? Now, the Galactic Republic, since its inception, you know, thousands of years ago, has failed. There have been continuous rebellions. There have been continuous attacks on Cor Coruscant. Is easily the most attacked portion of the entire uh, galaxy. It really is, and and that's the sad truth. Everyone thinks, well, you know, everything happens in the outer rim, or at least in the core worlds. No, it happens in the core world. It happens on Coruscant. Coruscant is continually attacked. In fact, if you look at um, j just during the Clone War itself. Uh, the, the Confederacy of Independent Systems was able to get to Coruscant. They were able to hit Coruscant with a massive fleet. They even landed forces on the planet, okay? It, 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 and they did it because there is a pathway there that's supposed to be there for free trade that is unrestricted, okay? The idea that a fleet could get to Earth in Star Trek, yes, it's happened one time. The Borg, one time. One time with the Borg because they were or able to decimate the because entire the fleet. The Borg were able to shove past all the defenses. They came past the Vulcans, they came past uh, the Klingons and the Romans and everyone else, and they were able to shove their way past the Federation fleet. And do you know what happened when they got here? They took it over, and yeah, the plot device of time travel was, was thrown in here. But you know what? It worked. It worked. It saved Earth, it saved the Federation. Now, it, what, is it a reset button? Yeah, it was a big ass reset button. But you know what? Well, it's a, it's wait, a wait, more wait, real. Wait, as, it's, as it is a much, more as, realistic much as the reset. force, as much as the force is just a plot device, plot armor, whatever you want to call it, they've never used it to I that it degree. Bullshit. Not in the movies. I'm not talking about the extended universe. I'm talking in the movies. When have you ever seen them go to that reset length button? When have I ever seen a Jedi use the Force to get what they wanted? Uh, these are not the robe. The, the well, actually, wait, wait. Looking for. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 sir, no, sir, no, sir. Obi Wan. No, wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me Kenobi. refute that. In, excluding, excluding episodes one to three. Excluding episodes one to three. 
Obi Wan Kenobi but, 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 continually used the Force to get what he wanted. Continually. Yeah, but that that could be just persuasion. You 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 can write that several different ways where it's just well, as no, realistic. No, no. See, here's the thing. Uh, in the bar on Coruscant, when they're looking for Zam Wessel, okay. When they're looking for her, the, you know, the assassin who just tried to kill somebody, uh, they use the force to make the crowd bend to their will. The, the, the drug dealer comes up and is like, hey, you want to buy some drugs? And, and Anakin's like, nope, and waves his hand. That went away, okay? That is, we're overusing magic. Woo! And that's why Watto's saying of, I'm a Tordarian, uh, magic tricks don't work on me, only money. That works. That's realistic because it's magic. Yes. It's bullshit. Wait, 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 wait. It's trying to trick people but, into doing what you Star, want to do because you wave live, your but, hand no, no, no. because some Star invisible Wars, creatures Star that are inside your bloodstream. Star never reset. They never the reset. They live with the consequences. Because invisible creatures in your bloodstream are magic. Ooh. Nice job, they, George they Lucas. Ne nice job, George Lucas. Not teaching children that you can actually speak to somebody and communicate with them and actually accomplish a goal. No, you had to use magic. Oh, Star Trek uses time travel, but you know time travel is still a possibility. It's entirely possible. Wait, 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 wait. Star now, Wars now, lives the, with the thing. consequences. At the, at, 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 hang on, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. At the quantum level, which is like the very basic of everything, you know, it's possible for particles to be here and there and nowhere at the same time. Okay, we know that atomic bonds will stretch over immense distances. You could take an atom and stretch it from here to the moon, and the particles would still be able to interact, okay? That's how things work. Like, there is a concept of time. Time is something that we in, that we each interpret differently. It's thought that human beings age differently because of our perception of time. There are animals that are born and die in a day. I mean, time is a real thing. It's, it's a measurable thing. So the idea that you could alter time, or you could slow it, or you can even go back in it, is possible. That's literally what the theory of relativity explains, okay? It's a possibility. It is a distinct yes. possibility. But and that's where Star Trek is right. Star Trek has always been about that hope. That hope that all these cool things that we want, you know, that there's other aliens out there. No, 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 no. That maybe Star they're Trek like is, us. Star Trek is maybe, about the hope that, that if maybe, something goes that wrong, maybe at some you can point just in time, fix that it. Maybe at some point in time, we'll be able to travel to these far off places and find people that are just like us. And they'll want to talk to us. We'll be able to share our culture with them. We'll be able to learn and grow and be better and everything's fine. That's what Star Trek's about. What is Star Wars about? Oh, look at us. We have laser swords. Look at us. We have magic. Woo -hoo -hoo. It's like DC versus Marvel. Star Trek is DC. Star Wars is Marvel. It's like, here's all the pretty things that you want. Look at it. It's Star Wars. What Wait, is uh, Star uh, Wars is intended to sell uh, merchandise. Uh, uh, that, you, you're literally defending a corporate business model of, ma of, of 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 toys that's what star wars is you're defending, and, and star the, you're, you're defending george so lucas's toys. idea to make millions of dollars off of children that's what you're doing you're you're, wait, you're, wait, wait, you're defending no, no, corruption wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh hold on hold on number one Star Trek is about the hope that if some shit goes down and goes completely wrong, you can just reset time and fix it. Because that's literally what they do in almost every series, almost every every major storyline. Uh, the Borg, uh, when the Federation fleet failed to stop the, or at least counter the attack uh, against the, uh, the Klingons. Oh, 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 and then there's Q. Explain Q. What about him? Q is a god. You don't have gods in Star Wars? Well, I mean, you're talking about, you know, oh, magic and how wrong magic is and how breaking magic is. How often does Q use magic and just break everything? So you're trying to claim that a godlike entity could not possibly exist, a, a, a higher power could not possibly exist that would be able to influence everything around it? Doesn't that seem to be like what the Force does? Except here's oh, the thing. Oh, no, 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 what I'm here's saying is you're criticizing the Force. The force. No, no, you're, the force you're criticizing the Force, invisible. but they already ha have the, the Force in Star Trek. They already have the Force in Star Trek. No, they don't. There is no Force in Star Trek. The there force is. It's no. called Q. It is no, called Q. No, 
The Q Continuum has been sitting back and watching us. The Q Continuum, despite being tricksters, is actually benevolent individuals. And in fact, it's, it's shown more than once that Q is actually the fuck up. Q is the black sheep. Q is the one who comes out and is like, oh, look, at, look, look, here's Picard. Here's Picard. I'm going to completely troll him and do wrong. Q gets punished for that shit, okay? The Q Continuum tells him, don't be a dick to these people. We're a higher power. We're better than that. It is our responsibility to let them develop, and that is the prime directive of Starfleet. If you encounter a race, if you encounter somebody who is not as developed as you, you let them develop. You help them once, once they get to the point where they're able to take a step up. You help people. You build up societies. You make things better from the ground up, and you do it through diplomacy and compassion and empathy. It builds a better world. What's and, the Empire about? Either do what we say, or we're going to kill you. That's what and, the Empire and, is about. The Republic wait, wait, wait. was about that. The Republic wait, wait. stood for the Republic I, I, stood. The Republic stood for ten, hundred, like a hundred generations, a thousand, however how long it was. Okay, and it failed. It failed. The Republic yeah. was bad. It was corrupt from the dark. Okay, that's why the Empire came into existence, and it, it, it didn't matter whether you look at the movies or the extended universe or whatever it is Disney's doing with it now. That's what you're going to see. The Republic is bad. There's uh, them. The Empire is, is bad. Okay, they're bad enough that there is a cult built around them. Kylo Ren is a cultist. They have a standing army. They use the same ships, the same guns, everything, because that idea of oh look at this. We're so powerful. We're going against the religious nut jobs. Ooh. And then what and then what does the first order do? They're able to corrupt society. Now think about something here, okay? For all the problems that you have seen in Star Trek, for every single problem you have ever seen in Star Trek, yes, sometimes they hit a reset button, but you know what? There has never been a point in time where anyone in the Federation, anyone in the Klingon Empire, or whatever, has not taken responsibility for the shit that they did wrong. Ever. Now, look at Star Wars, which you're supposed to be defending here, and I'm sorry, you're doing a very bad job of defending Star Wars here. Uh, look in your opinion. No, no, in reality. Uh, no, no. No, no, in reality. Uh, look at the Galactic Empire. Look at the Death Star, okay? That has been figured out to be a realistically buildable thing. Sure, you can do that for $500 trillion, okay? They built not one, but two of them. Two of them. Where did they get the money for that? Where did they get the money for this? And then what happens when... Actually, and, and, that's and, realistic. And, and, and then what happens when they're destroyed? The population An entire of... planet was blown up. An entire fucking planet was blown up. Millions and millions and millions of people No, 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 no. You're missing the point. You're missing, millions you're of missing the point. Millions people were slaughtered by a machine. You, you okay? are missing the now, point. No, no, no. The no, point no, I'm is not, that. I'm wait, wait, wait. I'm no, no, no. no. I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Look at the second You're Death missing Star. the point here. You are missing Death the point Star. here. The second Death Star was built within about five years, okay? It was easily built. Now, how did they do that? Well, it's built over a planet where they're having some trouble with the local natives. Why would the Empire be having trouble with them? Be, oh, look at that. They're probably enslaving the Ewoks to do it. How do I even know what a goddamn Ewok is? That's right, because a toy. A toy. It was marketing. The Ewoks exist as toys. It was built upon slavery. It was built upon corruption. It was built upon the idea that you do what we say you do, or you die. They built two Death Stars to enforce that, okay? And then Wait, what you're, happened? You're, just, Endor you're, you're, is no you're, longer you're there. literally proving my point. You're proving my point here. And that is that Star Wars is a warning. It is a warning of what can be if we do not fix things. Which is actually more important than the idealized version, the idealized dream. And it's why we need both Star Wars and Star Trek at the same time. Because Star Trek is the ideal, it is the dream that we should aspire to become. However, at the same time, and perhaps more importantly, we need Star Wars. Because Star Wars shows us what could happen, what could become of us, what be could become of uh, the universe. 
if we don't get our sh shit together. And that is why I start... And it also shows us what to do if things like that happen. Now, See, here's the, thing. here's the thing. It's interesting that you say that uh, because George Lucas did not predict what could happen. George Lucas intentionally took what was going on during the Bush administration yes, and yes, put that into episode yes. three. Intentionally. He's like, here... This is what's going on right now. Star no, Wars no, no, no. was Star Wars uh, was like, like used I said, what, what, Star what, Wars it, was what used will happen, to make a What I said is, war. what will happen if we don't get our shit together? Which means it will be the same thing that's going on now. The same thing that has been going on in history for uh, the past 5,000 years or so. Or however no, long you no, want to go it back. It was used to make a political point. It was used to talk about the dangers of your government spying on you and keeping track of you and knowing what you're doing and where you're doing it. And then having a bunch of nut jobs that are supposed to be defending them. They're, and that was the problem with the Republic. That's exactly the problem with it. The Republic and the, that's the, why the, it's the a government better, of the Republic. That's why it's the, a better story. That is why it's a better Republic, story. The government of the Republic fell because and the that, people were no, no, no. lied the to. Very, they were the failure of the Republic repeatedly. is exactly the reason is why no it's a better story. Save for Mon Mothma and Padme and other handful of individuals who said, hey, look, we can't allow this to happen, okay? Everyone just went along with it. Now, yes, that does say a lot about how stupid people can be, but we're talking about hundreds of trillions of individual beings here. Hundreds and we're talking about hundreds of, of millions of people here. here, and we have, what, a couple million that want to vote for Donald Trump right now? Yeah, but you know what? Here's the thing. There's enough people who are aware of, of, of why that's not okay, and they're, they're quite vocal about it. You didn't see that in the Republic. You did not see that in the Republic. Or, if you did, what happened? Oh, those are crazy people. They're wrong. People voted Palpatine into power. That's why Padme is sitting there listening to his speech after he was attacked by the religious nut jobs. By the way, because that was and, a and, that was and a people haven't been that elected into offices that are crazy spin. nut jobs in in the world. We do have crazy religious nut jobs. Okay, here's the thing, but but Palpatine was able to spin that into saying the attack on my life has left me scarred. Oh, it did. It fucked him up. It really did. It really did. That's the truth. But Pat makes it listen to it like, this is how liberty dies with thunderous supplies because people voted away their fucking freedom. They voted it away because and they were scared. They were play they had their fears played on because the religious nut jobs that who had supposed to protect them had failed. And that's what I said to start off with. The Jedi Order failed the Republic. And I'm going to they use a failed. Batman I'm going to use a Batman line against you. Star Wars is not the story we deserve, but it's the story we need. Because we need that story because of all the shit that's going on right now. We no, don't it's, no, need you Star need, Trek. You need Star Trek. You need it. No, and he, no, no, and no, 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 no. Star Trek is a story I'm, we deserve. I'm, it's a story I'm, I'm we deserve. We have not earned Star Trek. That, that's basic. Yes, no, no. Here's that is thing. how it is Here's right the now. The, the, the craziness thing. of the world, we have of, not earned Star look Trek. Look at the list of things that we have from Star Trek, okay? We don't have magic. We don't have laser swords from Star Wars. We don't have that. Oh, we just Instead, said they have magic. What do we have? We, we, have, the have, we have the capability to replicate food and mass quantities. We have the idea that people can be better because if you build society up, things will get better, okay? Okay? We have harnessed the ability to make you know, to, to essentially make phasers. Everything, like, we have a cell phone that I'm holding in my hand right now. This is shit out of Star Trek, okay? Star Trek provides you a blueprint for a better society. It is your responsibility to buy into that, okay? It is your responsibility to understand that you can make a difference. It doesn't matter whether you're uh, black, white, yellow, uh, Christian, atheist, Muslim, whatever. The idea that you play a part in society. The idea that everyone else on the planet is dependent upon you. You. You, you, and you, Star Wars you. Make you, the you the individual up. makes a difference. The individual is what makes the, the, the Federation work. Yeah, and Star Wars <laughs> teaches you to stand up to corruption. It teaches you to stand up when you see injustice. All Star Wars does is say, here, look, Get you some friends like you and go declare war on people. It doesn't teach you jack shit. 
Okay, Star Trek teaches you diplomacy. It teaches you to work together. It teaches you to be nice to everyone around you because that's what's going to have to happen to get what you need. It teaches you diplomacy works. No matter what problems you have, diplomacy will work. Kindness works. Be nice to other people around you. That means a lot more to me than the idea of, oh, hey, look, I'm going to go get a couple million people and I'm going to go declare war on somebody. Okay? The Empire. So, the so, empire, so if the, the, Na so the, the Nazis empire, were still around, you're going to be diplomatic with them. Do what? If the Nazis were still around killing and slaughtering people, you're, you're just going to be diplomatic with them. Yeah, believe it or not, I actually would, because for some strange reason, I believe, in, I, I believe there is a better side to every human being. I genuinely, truly believe that. I think you can negotiate people and get an understanding of them. Now, that might not work. There are people who do want to watch the world burn. There really are. But the truth is that if you take the time to understand why somebody does something, you can figure out how to stop them. It's, it it, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about the Nazis. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about uh, radical Islamic terrorists. It doesn't matter. If you take the time to understand them and understand why it is they're doing what they do, you have an easier time of dealing with them. You have an easier time. Now, what happened in the case of Hitler? Oh, it's not like he actually wrote a book. Even though he did, it was a bestseller. He wrote a fucking book that explained all of his ideas, all these insane ideas and what he wanted to do. And it was overlooked by society because why? We voted away our freedom. We didn't listen to what anyone had to say. We didn't give a shit about diplomacy. We didn't reach out to him and say, hey, this might not be cool. Is there someone we can talk about this? No. The United States sat back on its ass and waited. Okay, we were not going to get involved in World War II. Then what happened? We get attacked by Japan. Suddenly, and without warning, by Japan. Which, by the way, the anniversary of which is coming up here in a couple of days. So we get attacked by. Uh, the oh, people. but we were we were using diplomacy. We 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 did it when it go to war. We were using diplomacy. That's right. That's right. And then you know what the last resort was? The the absolute last resort for the United States? Warfare. That was the last tactic that we had. That was the only thing that we had. And you know what happened when we did it? We won. But diplomacy was able to work. It worked. We tried it. We tried it from the get-go. We kept going at it. And that's exactly what the United States but, is supposed to do. That's exactly but, what the Federation of Planets does. That's exactly what they do. They don't but, attack wait, wait, somebody wait, 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 unless they what have the cost to. Of that? What was the cost of that diplomacy? The Federation of Planets does not attack people unless they have to. Okay? The betterment of society comes first. Work with people. Get an understanding of them. That might not be the cool thing to do. You know, it, it, like, for example, uh, ISIS. You know, no one really wants to look at ISIS and say, oh, hey, here, I'm going to take the time to understand you. What you see is, attack them! Attack them! Boom! Blow them up! Bomb them! Turn the Middle East into glass! <laughs> no, that's not going to work. You can't do that. You have to take the time to understand you're dealing with an ideology, an ideology of corruption, an ideology that teaches you to murder people and to harm people and to put society back. You're not going to beat that with bombs and guns. It's just like the Empire. You're not going to beat the Empire because you raise an army and you attack them, okay? In reality, in absolute reality, what happened after the end of the Clone War and the end of the Gladiator Civil War is the Empire was not able to be destroyed. It's shown the extended universe, and clearly it's going to happen in the new Star Wars movie, okay? The First Order comes about as a cult now. You know, they're supposed to be the weirdness, but the reality is the uh, the the Republic was never restored. Okay, but it could wait, never, wait, 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 wait! You, you, you just said that, wait, wait, wait! You just said that we won World War II in a Star Trek ideal fashion. Yet the Nazis are still here, and they are a cult now. Go that's to Eastern right, Europe. Right. They, they are a right. cult now. That's right, but here's the thing. Do we have massive armies of Nazis? Do we have their death camps or anything like that? Well, no. We Do might, you know we why? might very you soon. Know we might very Do soon. Do you know why we don't? Do you know why we don't? No, we, because, we might very soon. We, we don't have massive Nazi death camps. We don't have, 
you know, Nazis coming to power and killing everybody because society learned from that. Society advanced. They realized, hey, we had to resort to armed conflict. We got our message across. Are you, are you, are you country, sure about that? Because Eastern Europe doesn't seem to have learned exactly. It has in a lot of ways. There are still policies in place, I admit that. But you know what? The world turned out to be a better place because we listened to what the Nazis had to say. And then we reacted when shit got real. Exactly what the Federation had to do. It's exactly what the Federation does. That's, that's all they no, do. No, 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 no. Diplomacy should be your first line of defense. That is the way all governments should work. You should want to work with someone. You should want to reach out to them and say, hey, I understand you have a difference of opinion here. Let's work together and see, and, and see what we can possibly do you know, to settle our grievances. You don't have to fight everything out. You really don't. You honestly, generally, do not have to fight everything out. And that's what you see in Star Wars. Uh, I'm going to raise an army. I'm going to attack you. No, you're going to attack me. No, and that's why the Clone War was Clone Wars were so horrible. That's why the Galactic Civil War was so horrible. That's why the Republic failed. I'm telling you, that's exactly why all versions of the Republic failed miserably. The Gla and that's yeah, why Star Wars is a more realistic story than Star Trek. Because that's not. how our... But it's not. No, it's it, really it, not. It is. That's how it's our really society not. works. Really, no, that's no, how our society... No, uh, look no, at, look at the Civil no. War. Look at the American Revolution. World War II. World War I. I can go on every single war. It is a representative of Star Wars, not yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, and, Star and, Wars and, is a reflection and, and, and of what, what is. What exactly happened? Okay, let's just look at our Civil War here. Our Civil War. What happened after that? All these people got so offended and so angry and so upset over whatever ideas led them to secede, okay? What happened? It's a four-year-long war. A lot of people died. A lot of... Pro uh, I, mean, I mean, we're talking about 3% about of the American population. An entire generation of men in this country were wiped out forever. Gone. They're dead. They're no longer here. But what happened after that? What was Abraham Lincoln's final solution to that? It wasn't, oh, let's just destroy them all. It was not, oh, let's occupy the South. No, it was diplomacy. Let them come back. Listen to what they have to say uh, actually, that, and work that, with that them. Abraham better. Lincoln believed in democracy. That he actually would have worked better if we occupied the South, honestly. The South was occupied. Look what you have now. Look at look no, at the no, South. No, no. This, no, 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 the first person in the Confederacy to say, look, lay down your arms, it's over, let's be diplomatic. The first person the Confederacy had to do that was one of the last to get a pardon. And uh, the way because you the would have fixed would... it is if you gave out the 40 acres and $40 as promised and that stopped the William, Jim Crow that laws was that they were being Sherman said. That was something that Sherman said, and Sherman could not deliver on that. That was not a government policy. Sherman, acted, uh, Sherman, acted on, Sherman said that on his own, okay? That was yeah, and it, they, they should have followed through with that. That that literally would have fixed almost a, no, a lot of our current no. problems. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Absolutely would not. Uh, instead, Wait. what happened? Instead, what you happened was a radical person stood up and murdered probably one of the best chances for peace that we had. Now, I I am by no means a Lincoln fan. I really don't like Abraham Lincoln. Okay, because I think uh, in his own policies, he invaded his own country. He, he is responsible in a lot of ways because he opted to say, hey, these people don't want to talk to me. I'm going to raise an army. Okay, a four year long war. I had family who fought for the Confederacy. I, I, I admit it. I did. Okay, it split the country in half. Some people in my family fought. For their own rights. They fought to defend themselves. They fought to defend their neighbors. Now, whether their neighbors were slave owners or not, it didn't matter. They fought for what they thought was right. That was important. It's always important to fight for what you believe in, okay? Don't misunderstand me here. I'm saying you need to do that. But but Lincoln wanted diplomacy. He wanted to treat everyone fairly, okay? Even when the Confederacy sent uh, people to meet with him, 
uh, Alexander Stevens, one of the greatest firebrands in American history, one of the most righteous individuals in American history, is basically like listening to Donald Trump if you, if you listen to his speeches. Uh, <clears throat> he asked, that the only question that he asked is, will the Confederate States be readmitted if we surrender? Will we be readmitted in time to discuss the amendment to the Constitution? That's the only thing he, that was the only question he had for Lincoln. Lincoln's response was, yes, we'll let you back in. We'll discuss. We will resume diplomatic relations with you. But instead, no, they were, you know, the, the psychotic nut job assassinated him. And then you had Johnson come in office and Andrew Johnson was a failure. His idea was to occupy the Confederate States of America. He, his, no, idea no, was, no. his idea, his idea, no, no, was, that to, was, a his idea idea. was to occupy the former Confederacy. Okay? No, 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 Until no. He, he, fought, he actively fought against a Republican. No, because he was no, a... No, 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 Reconstruction, which is the polite term for it, uh, was actually a military occupation of the former yeah. Confederacy. I live in a no, town... No. I live in a town that was occupied by the federal government. The people here in the town... And it was led them. by the Republican Congress, not not Johnson. Do you know... It, it didn't matter. It was his administration. It's his administration. And, and, and as Harriet Truman said, the buck stops here. Okay? I live in a town... Yeah, but it, I that, I that wasn't town, his... That wasn't what he wanted town, to do. That was I the Republican town, Congress. I live in a town that was occupied by United States military forces. Okay? And yeah, you, and, 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 and it was because of the Republican Congress, not because of Johnson. And do you know what the people in my town did to get them or get the army out of here? Diplomacy. We resorted to talking about it. Now, when I say we, I'm, I'm using the rural we here. Uh, they resorted to diplomacy. They founded laws that said uh, federal troops cannot be within a hundred yards of the courthouse, and that was expanded. Over and over again until it was outside the city limits. In fact, it took until about the ninth, you know, about the nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, somewhere around there, before the, before that law became overlooked. It took a hundred years before the law was overlooked. But you know what? We still don't have military parades uptown because it's against the law here. Diplomacy worked. It worked. Lincoln wanted to restore the country. That was that was his only. I don't, I, 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 I don't think Abraham diplomacy Lincoln's worked. I, 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 I do not think diplomacy worked. Abraham Lincoln's heart to have to go in the Civil War. It ruined him. It hurt him deeply for, for, yeah. it, for it to have come to that. So, here's the thing. If, if, if Star Wars is supposed to teach us about that, then we should all be really hurt that we have to have military action. We should really be bothered by it, particularly if we have to attack someone in our own country. You know, these people who are radicals and are insane and whatever, and they're, and they're killing people, we should be really upset that that's going on. We should want to try and prevent that from happening. But instead, oh, you should, don't, instead, we did. instead, we don't see that happening. What we see going on here, instead of reaching out to them, is, oh, no, you're crazy, you're insane, we're not going to do a goddamn thing about it. Look at the response to the shooting in San Bernardino. What do you have on one side? We need stricter gun laws. What do you have on the other side? Everyone needs to have a gun. You're not going to solve a problem if you can't work together, and that's the problem. No one wants to fucking work with anyone else. You gotta have diplomacy. You have to take a tactic from the Federation of Planets, from Star Trek, reach out to individuals, talk to them, find out what's going on with them, and if you have to use violence, make that be your last resort. You have to do that. Star Wars does not teach you that. Star Trek teaches you that. Yeah, because Star Wars teaches you about what really happens in the world today and what the no, consequences no, of that are. No, no, Star Wars... Now, now, here's the thing, here's the thing. I will give you points for saying that, but I'm not going to concede my argument to you. Here, and here's the reason. Even though that is... Even though reality... You know, even, though, <laughs> even though I'll agree with you, you know, Star Wars does teaches you some good points here. But the thing is, if you want to take a better example away from it, the idea, to me... I don't know if you're going to agree with this, but you know we're, we're, what we're going to do is, uh, everyone who's listening to this, you tell us in the comments below what you think about what we've had to say. Uh, but my reasoning is that uh, Star Trek is a better example than Star Wars. Star Wars says, look, resort to violence to get what you want to do. That's what it does. And we both admit that's what it does. You know, The idea, we're going to have an army, 
that will stand up and we're going to fight it out. Okay, that's what it says. It does show you what corruption is. But the only the only recourse you have, even with the and, and, and even the Jedi fail this. The Jedi fail so hard at this. Okay. Uh, yeah, it shows you what happens when diplomacy fails because the Jedi did try diplomacy and it failed. There, that's because the Republic was corrupt. There was no way that diplomacy was going to work for the Republic. But it seems to work for the for the Federation of Planets. It seems to work in Star Trek. What's the difference? Because, you come across, because you come Star Trek is an idealized universe where yeah. diplomacy is much more effective because people are much more open to uh, listening. Which is my entire argument. Because we live in a world where people are not open to listening. And because of that, Star Wars is a more realistic version of what our future will be than Star Trek. Even though Star Wars has the Force, even though uh, there's lots of aliens and we don't necessarily know if aliens exist yet or not, it, it is still just based on the response, based on the, uh, the way people react to diplomacy, the corruption. Star Wars is actually the more realistic version of our future. And because of that, it's the one that we need right now more. Because we need to see what we're going to become if we don't fix these things. Now, we need Star Trek at the same time, obviously, because we need that ideal to look forward to what we should be. I mean, yeah, yeah, Star Wars is more flashy, Star Wars is more fun, but it's not the future that I want to live in. I want to live in a Star Trek future where everyone is equal, where we don't have to worry about food, where we can really be what we want to be and do what we want to do. That's the future I want to live in. But I know that Star Wars is the future that we need to see because it is the one that we're going to become if we don't take the right actions, if we don't learn to listen. And that's why Star Wars is better than Star Trek. Well, see, okay, here's the thing. I'm fixing to twist your argument around, and, and this is going to be a final time. We, we've been doing this for like an hour and a half now, and I'm, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm out of water. Like, my, 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 <laughs> I really am. Like, I don't mind talking about this forever, but, you know, like all the shouting and everything. Anyway. Um, well, that would be my closing uh, argument. Okay. Well, mine is essentially what you made, only from a different perspective. And that's because I can listen to what you have to say. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's it, Star Trek is more important because precisely because it tells you what you need to aim for. Like that's the goal. Now, how do you get there? Well, Star Trek does tell you: build society, be polite to people, don't resort to violence unless you absolutely have to. And for those of you Christians out there, that's exactly what Jesus has to say. Jesus would be a Star Trek fan, not a Star Wars fan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 so, I'm so sorry to tell you that. Uh, but the reality is, if you want to build a better society, if you want to fix the problems, you have to work together. You cannot have a divided group of people. You cannot say, well, we're going to have these people over here, and they're going to stand up, and they're going to speak for me. You can't give that away. You have to be actively involved. You have to be involved. You have to be. Just like, uh, for example, Todd Jagger from Wolfpack, who we had on you know, a while back. That's what Wolfpack does. They reach out to individuals, and they uh, make Wolfpack. contact with them, and they speak to them, and they work together. You want to solve a problem, you have to work together. You can't just say, either work with me, or, or fuck you. And, and But really, that's my closing statement. Well, that was fun. That was fun. That was actually what? probably... That, that was actually probably one of our better shows i think like really i think we need to do more things where we argue like that like that and but yeah anyway um I think that was our best show i think that was our best show probably but really what i think we need to do is uh whenever this whenever this gets edited and posted you know i'm, I'm linking on facebook and what i would like all of you are doing who are listening to to this you know uh weigh in in the comments you know like wh wh it, it doesn't matter whether you listened to the whole series of arguments or not because i realize we're probably like you know, any debate uh, where people get tired of listening after 20 minutes and other things. Uh, but sincerely, I, I really hope that everyone uh, actually listened to what we had to say. And what I would like to see is in the comments below, you know, let us know what you think. Like, you know, like weigh in with your opinions. Be diplomatic about it. You know, don't don't don't, don't attack Nick for being wrong. 
Uh, but um, just, you know, say what you have to say. Now, now whether you think that uh, Star Trek is better or Star Wars is better or whatever, you just let us know. Uh, you're like you're just saying because because ultimately it, 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 it ultimately it does not matter uh, what I say or what Nick says. It's, it's really, you know, like the really only way to figure it out is you know like to come to a consensus to be diplomatic. Okay, uh, you have to you, you you have to side with Star Wars because you're going to have to acknowledge that you're going to have to be able to work together with somebody to be able to find a solution. But you got a lightsaber. <sighs> Personally, I would rather have the Enterprise. Than any ship from Star Trek, Star Wars. I do like the X-wing. No, 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 no. And and, and see, here's the interesting thing. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is actually firmly on the side of Star Wars, Star Trek. Ah, oh, damn. Well, yeah. Be, because because the re, because like, uh, n number one reason is, uh, take for example a Star Destroyer, or well, you know, let's go with the Millennium Falcon. Lumen Falcon has absolutely no shielding on it. It's very poor weapon and weaponry. In fact, that is something that's very common in, in all of Star Trek ships. You know, oh well, we have shields. What do they do? Oh well, they just kind of lightly absorb some damage. They don't do anything. You know, you you, you can hit them, but you're still going to get through to the actual ship itself. And you see that on every ship in Star Wars. Everyone look at the battle. Look at the battle over Coruscant. You know. Uh, even though they have, well, I mean, we, well, well, we have ray shielding. Ray shielding doesn't do jack shit for impacts. Okay, now, now look at now look at Star Trek. Energy shielding that stops anything that is kinetic, which which is including phaser fire. It it stop it helps to stop uh, uh, torpedo fire and uh, phaser fire. But well, we still don't have shielding. that. I mean, we we still are missing uh, shielding. But it's something that's possible. It's possible to do ray shielding, uh, but Maybe. There, but but there is also um, they okay. For example, in uh, Star Trek Enterprise, they had the concept of polarized hull planning, which is supposed to be able to you know to you know to try and you know you know protect the hull, but the, but you know but the shielding you know, but the shielding would fail regularly because certain things were could overpower it. That's kind of real. now now that, that's realistic along lines of Star Wars, uh, but there's a thing that we have now. Uh, it's called uh, ablative plating, ablative armor rather. Uh, you see it a lot on tanks. It's basically uh, these big uh, terracotta plates that hang over the side. That if you shoot an RPG or whatever at it, it will shatter that instead of actually damaging the vehicle underneath it. Like it, like it's yeah. a big, it's big, big as ceramic tiles that will absorb the damage. That's that, yeah. that, that's a shielding, but you don't see that in Star Wars. You see, you know, these I massive mean, ships that have to be so large because because they essentially just absorb the damage into the vehicle themselves. Uh, I mean, it's uh, I mean, well, I I think a Star Trek versus Star Wars fight would be its own discussion on its own. I, I think we could do an entire show on just that, honestly. We kind of did, but 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 realistically, uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, uh, if, if we took Star Wars weaponry versus Star Trek weaponry, we might have to do that. But re but re but realistically, here, uh, talking about the, the Enterprise versus, say, a Star Destroyer, the Enterprise is going to win because it has better shielding. Yeah, it's better reference. Uh, I mean, look, look, look. I mean, it, 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 well, no, wait, wait. The, the, the thing is, we would have to know how Star Trek shielding would work against uh, Star Wars weaponry. Because, uh, huh? It's pretty easy to figure that out. Like, it's not hard. Mm -hmm. Not like, necessarily, lot, but, I mean, well, I mean, no, because uh, as Star Trek shielding gets uh, hit over and over and over again, uh, the shielding breaks down, and then, you know, the ship is open to attack. Um, not only that, Star Trek, uh, it, it, it's basically one big warship, it's more like akin to a battleship, whereas most of Star Wars uh, big uh, uh, ships are more akin to carriers, and through war warfare, we know a carrier almost always wins against a battleship. Not really. 
Uh, the reason. No, okay. no, no, now, no, no, no. Now, Exterior now, okay. always wins against the battle. Okay. Always. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, the Republic and the Empire were able to you know, to have these. I mean, we're talking ship ship combat. I mean, there was no other way to settle this. Like, hey, you know, we, we need to end the show here, though. <laughs> we do. Okay. But, but, okay. 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 This is gonna be, this is gonna be my last point. Uh, if you look at uh, the ships that, that you see in Star Wars, you know, like Star Destroyers and everything, they're huge, massive ships. And the reason they're so large is because they – the reason they don't really need uh, that much shielding and everything because the ships are actually designed – they're they're intentionally built uh, so large that all the impacts can just be absorbed. And you see that uh, – the best example in the movie itself – is actually um, the opening of episode three, where you had the battle over Coruscant. I mean, you see these ships firing repeatedly into one another, and like you, you see these explosions and everything, but it didn't really destroy the ship. And that's the idea. They're built to withstand uh, repeated attacks. Now, the problem with that is that Star Trek weapons are actually more powerful. They actually are. Uh, we're talking about something that's capable of severely damaging another ship like i mean uh for example the phasers on the enterprise can be recalibrated to where uh they will be uh it, it, it works with different frequencies uh you have uh proton torpedoes which is basically a nuclear bomb in and of itself you know it's like you're basically it's essentially uh we're talking uh super 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 powerful uh, beams of light, which we know a beam of light, or, or, or a, a laser right now can really do some severe damage. Uh, we're talking about that, uh, whereas the, uh, for example, uh, the weaponry in Star in Star Wars, like like the 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 guns, uh, they the, they're not laser guns. Uh, they're actually a kinetic weaponry. This was described in Shadows of the Empire, I believe. Uh, the idea that, for example, uh, whenever you see like a blaster bolt, it's actually a bolt. It's like a bolt of energy. It's it, it's it's energy casing with like a tracer in it. That's all it is. So uh, so if that was not there, you just be you you, you just have you know like the fire. It, 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 it's kinetic energy. Okay. Uh, the problem with kinetic energy is is that Star Trek shields completely absorb that they completely absorb it. it didn't matter how big a ship you have it can completely absorb that uh but the weaponry in star trek you know like i said is uh modulated energy it is continued in it like it's pulse energy it's not just like a little bolt that hits and it stops it's continue it, it like and, 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 and it's driven off the ship's engines and the torpedoes are essentially nuclear bombs okay so so that's what you're talking about comparing so a ship like a star destroyer sure that's going to be able to take a beating but the reality is the enterprise would wind up destroying it because it's better protected and their weapons are much much stronger they're going to be able to do pinpoint attacks and be able to hit certain things on the star destroyer to where they'll eventually take it out i mean you can go beyond that and say the enterprise has actually got better scanning capabilities and when, the reason i say that is if you look and th this was pointed out in uh, a, a Cinema Sins video, believe it or not, um, so you, so you can go and look at that. Uh, what you see is uh, the scanners on that the Empire uses are really bad. Like there's con there's con there the idea, uh, for example, the escape pod that launches with C three PO and R two D two. Well, there's no life forms on that. Okay, blow it up anyway. You know, I mean, we're talking about a society where we you know we know they have droids. We know that they have robots, so blow it up anyway. You never know what could be on there. Uh, and then when they're scanning the Millennium Falcon when it's on board the Death Star, oh, well, we didn't find any life forms in there. But you had to send a crew on the ship. Why can't you do that from outside? I mean, how sucky are your sensors that you can't detect people that are hiding underneath floorboards inside of the Death Star? The Falcon was inside the Death Star. But anyway, like I said, uh, we, we've been going for like an hour and a half now. So that, I, so, I, so, so I'm that, going to argue this later with you. Well, we're, we're going to... Well, you know what? Maybe we'll do this next week. I don't know. But yeah, well, we'll... 
have to end it here for today because like I said, an hour and a half, so. We, we, we don't want to keep going forever, even though we probably could. We could. We could. So yeah, that, 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 that's going to be it for today. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for commenting on this. Uh, please remember to like the video, comment on it, share it, subscribe it everywhere, like us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments, you know, down the doobly-doo. Uh, I will link uh, Sarah and Cash's Nerdy Adventure in the description when this is edited. I'll post it on our Facebook. Uh, let us know what you think, uh, and we'll talk to you Monday. So have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great week, and Star Wars will be here soon. So, yeah, I, I'm excited. Goodbye, everybody. You're excited because you're a big kid getting to play with toys. Bye, everybody! Is there anything wrong with that? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>